Hello everybody, my name is Adrian Iliasiu and I'm an engineer with the Cisco DevNet team. So in this part of the course, we're going to start our developing our first application using the REST API. So, so far you've seen in the previous lesson, Postman and how to generate code. So we're going to start building on top of that. We're going to get uh, to writing code, we're going to get uh, to developing our Python script, and we're going to look at accomplishing five things with our application. So as you've seen with the Swagger documentation and also with Postman, we're going to try to do, um, we're going to try to get a list of devices that are part of the SD1 fabric first. Um, so the same API call that we did uh, through Swagger and Postman, we're going to try to do it in Python to show you how that, uh, that works. Next, we're going to get uh, a list of the device configuration templates. Uh, then we're going to get a list of devices that are associated to a specific template. We're going to see what that entails, how we're going to accomplish that. And then the last two parts are going to be, we're going to try to attach devices to a template and also detach devices. All of these five tasks in our application, we plan on accomplishing them through the REST API. So we're going to develop a Python 3 script. And this can be easily migrated backwards to Python 2 if you really want. But we strongly encourage, uh, if you are a beginner, to start learning Python 3 right off the bat instead of going with 2. Um, the libraries that we're going to use for this are is going to be the requests library. We're going to have a, a quick look at the link for this in a few seconds here. The next one is the click library, which will allow us to actually develop a CLI around our application. We're going to use this to take advantage of that. And then the tabulate library, which uh, we're going to use just to pretty print the output that we get back from the API. So I have the code already ready for you at this link. It is a GitHub public repo. The link is the same as the one that we've seen with the Postman collections and the Postman environment. So if you've already cloned or copied this, uh, made a copy of the code in there on your local machine, then you're fine to go. If not, this is what you should do. Just git clone it, get it on your local machine if you want to follow along. You will see there a file called requirements.txt. And if we go actually to our browser, I will show you in GitHub right here. So we have the Postman folder with the Postman collection and environment. And then we have the requirements.txt. Here is a list of libraries and their version that you're going to need to pip install to make sure that uh, your script runs. And also, I have the main application itself. We're going to go step by step, and I'm going to explain all of the functionality in here and what each line of code does for us and show you how to accomplish the five tasks that we set um, at the beginning. So pip install the requirements and then also make sure you do this in a virtual environment. We strongly encourage whenever you start a new project to use virtual environments in Python. It, it is very useful and personally I think it's the best practice when you develop in Python to use the virtual environment capability so that you keep separate projects in separate virtual environments. You have the requirements and all the libraries and the different versions of libraries that you're going to use confined into that virtual environment without causing conflicts between uh, different versions of libraries and uh, code that you need to run. OK, so next, we're going to start um, and have a look at the libraries, at the links that I was mentioning before. So for the requests library, this is the link that you can find in the presentation, the PowerPoint presentation already. So I just open it in the browser here for you. So the request library is a popular library for interacting with REST APIs. So 
I mentioned this briefly in the Postman lesson, but in this lesson, I'm gonna go and show you a bit the link and uh, how easy it is to actually do a get call that we've seen so far in Swagger and in Postman, how easy it is to do the same call, but this time using the request library in Python. So after we import at the top, of course, we're gonna have to import requests here. And after we import, we can actually start using the functionality of the library within our code. So here, I'm using the get method from the request, and I'm storing the response into the R variable. And then I'm accessing the attribute status code. We've seen this also in the previous lesson. So you can access the status code. We have a status code of 200. You can access the headers, content type. We see here that it's application JSON in this case. We see here, first of all, that it's a get call. We see the resource or the endpoint that we're trying to get to. Here is api.github.com user. And then we pass in an auth parameter to the get function. And we pass in the user and the password for that. Um, going down, we can access the encoding, the text, and also the JSON um, attribute of the R object, which contains the response to our request get call. Very easy, very simple. Um, I recommend if you start working with APIs to have a look at the request library. To begin with, there's other libraries out there that you might wanna use, but if you wanna have a look at this, this is just my personal preference that I use. Um, going forward to the next one, I mentioned the click library. So this is command line interface creation kit. This gives us the option of actually building our own CLIs through Python code. So what does that mean is that by importing click in our application, we are able to build a CLI with options, with um, prompts, with default values, and also with help context for each of the options in the CLI. So here, if we have a look, for the click option of name, we have defined a hello function that takes the count and the name. So basically, both of these options are gonna get passed from the user to this function, to the hello function, which is gonna go through a for loop, and it's gonna echo back, it's gonna do a click echo back to the console uh, the message that you've specified in the name variable, right? So an example of this is right here, if we run this, we pass in a count of three, and we have a prompt here, so it makes it very interactive. You can have the prompt or you can skip it, but it makes it interactive for you to be able to interact with the user and ask for, uh, in this case, the name. So you specify the name, it gets into the function, runs hello John three times. So it takes the count and then the name, and then with the for loop, it iterates through them three times and prints out the screen, hello John. Very easy library also to use uh, and to get started if you wanna build your own CLIs. Uh, it's just something that I find interesting and I'm using this uh, and I found it very easy to use. So recommended if you would like to start playing with creating your own CLIs. The third library that I wanted to mention is the tabulate library. So with the tabulate library, uh, we're gonna just pretty print data that we get back from the API. So it's gonna organize it in a nice tabular um, fashion for us, and we'll go over the code and I'll explain in more detail what, it, what we're gonna do with this. Um, Okay, perfect, so now let's have a look at the actual code. If you wanna follow along, if you've cloned the repo, you should have open sdwan.py. So this is our main application. Uh, we call it sdwan.py. And let's have a look uh, at what actually it does. Uh, we set the five things that we want to accomplish with this. 
Now let's see how we're actually gonna, uh, gonna do that. First of all, we're gonna import our libraries that we're gonna use. I said we're gonna import requests. We're gonna import click and tabulate. And the other ones, sys, this is just to exit. We're gonna use the exit attribute of sys um, in case um, an error condition occurs. We're just gonna exit the script. The JSON library, we're gonna use the JSON library to interact with JSON output from the API. So we're gonna load it, extract data from the JSON output, uh, look for specific fields and specific values within the output that we're interested in. So we're gonna use the JSON library to play around and extract data from JSON data. Uh, then we're gonna use the OS library. We're gonna use the OS library to load up three parameters. We're gonna use it to load up the bmanage IP address, the username, and the password. So we're gonna load them up into our script through environment variables. So we're gonna define these three. I'm gonna show you how. Also in the script, we have a, um, a small help part in which we tell the user, hey, if you don't have these environment variables, this is how you should actually create them. And those are the libraries that we're gonna use. In this part, it's just we're not gonna display the warning message regarding the SSL certificate. So we're just gonna ignore that. And here is the part that I was telling you about with the three parameters that we're gonna get from the environment variables, right? So we're gonna use SDN underscore IP to get our SDN IP address. SDN underscore username, those three variables will store the IP, the username, and the password that we're gonna use to connect to our vManage instance and interact with and get our data from. So we're gonna use the same environment attribute from the OS library to get the SDN username and last, to get the password. So if these three variables are not defined as environment variables, and we see here we're doing that test in this line. So if SDN is none, or SDN username is none, or the password is not there, so if either of these three is not there, we're actually gonna print this message to the user. Hey, Cisco SDN details must be set via environment variables before running. And these are the three, and this is an example uh, of how you should define them in uh, a Linux or Windows environment. Print and then exit one, because these are mandatory for us to know, hey, I need to connect to this vManage instance with this username and password. So this is something that we require so that we know which environment we're gonna use. Next. We have here a class, a Python class defined that you can use right off the bat. So we try to keep it as simple and also as um, easy to integrate as possible. So we called it REST API lib, the class. And we have three, function in here, three functions uh, in this class. We have the login function we're gonna see uh, be down the get request and the post request. So with this class, what we're trying to do is just log in into the vManage instance with the credentials that we've got from the environment variables and also have two functions for do, doing get requests and also post requests to the REST API. So the login function here takes, we see here the three parameters we we're talking about the vManage IP, the username, and then also the password. And then we're starting to build our endpoint. The, the endpoint uh, to which the login uh, function will reach out to. So we're gonna start with base URL. This is the vManage string which gets translated from here, right, as a parameter of the login function, gets transferred into our base URL. So it's gonna be https colon colon slash slash 
In our case, the vManage IP will be, will be the name actually, will be sandboxsdwan.cisco.com. Then the port is already there. Um, the login action, if you remember, this is the endpoint that you, you have to go to with a post call when you're trying to log in. We've seen this also in the Postman collection. It was there, so it's basically uh, HTTPS colon colon slash slash will be sandbox sandbox sdwan.cisco.com slash J underscore security check. Security underscore check. So this is our endpoint for the login function. The login data is right here will be the payload. So this is the J username and we get this username also from the parameter of the function. And this will be part of the URL we're building, part of our endpoint. This will be part of our payload, the data that we're sending. And we just do here a couple of more additions to the actual URL to build the exact URL that we need to make the request to. Um, then we open a session, a request session. We store the result in um, SCSS, and then we do our post call right here. The URL is the login URL, which we take from there. The data that we were seeing is the actual payload, and is the J underscore username, and then the J underscore password. and we don't verify the SSL certificate for authenticity. Next, if we get a 200 OK and nothing comes back, we know that the authentication was successful and the login attempt was good. If we get any HTML output in, in the response, the content of the response, we know that the login didn't work and we exit the script right here because the login failed and then we store the session and we make it available to the other functions in this class so that they can take advantage of the session and the cookie that we just obtained here. Next, after the login function, like I was saying, we have the get request and the post request. So these two functions are basically what their name says. We use them for our get request and our post request. The get request function takes one parameter, the mount point, which is your endpoint or your resource that you're trying to get information from over the API. In this case, we build the URL right here. We take the string, that's the vManage IP. We take this also from the login function, right? So it's going to get populated there. And then data service. And the second string will be the mount point right here, which is taken from here, basically, as a parameter of the get request function. So this is our endpoint that we're trying to use, right? The, the mount point or the resource. And then in the response variable, we use the session that we opened in the login and we do a get on the URL and we don't verify the SSL certificate authenticity. From the response of the get request, we store just the content, just the content attribute of the response into the data and we return it to the user. So this is the get request function four lines of code to do a get request to a specific mount point and display the data and return the data to the user. Similarly, the post request uh, takes 
a bit of more parameters, takes a mount point, of course, so that's a resource that we're trying to create or post data to. The payload, in this case, it's also needed, taken as a parameter of the function, and then we specified the headers as application JSON. So we're sending data in JSON format to the API. The URL or the endpoint is getting built. Again, we're using the vManage IP from the login function, gets populated here, and the second string is the actual mount point and gets populated there. So under the data service, we specify for that the mount point and the actual resources that we're trying to, to use and to, to reach. The payload is just taken as a parameter from the function and then we print it here uh, just so that the user sees. In the next line, we store into the response variable the post result of our call. The URL is this one that we define here. So it will get populated here. The payload is the JSON version of the payload we pass in. And then the headers are the headers that we take from here, right? So the response variable would contain the result of that post call. And then we go forward and we extract from the response, we extract the JSON attribute of that object and we store it into our data variable and then we return the data to the user. So the post request takes two parameters basically, the mount point and the payload, the headers are predefined. So what data am I trying to send and to which resource, right? Where is the location of the resource in the schema of the REST API? Return the data. So these three functions here in the class REST API lib, login, get, and post. If you want to extend this with put or delete, you're more than welcome. We don't need it for this specific use case that we're trying to cover here. And if we go back to the presentation, we covered so far classes and functions. So we start with the class REST API lib. You've seen the login function. Uh, you've seen the parameters that it takes, the three parameters, the vManage IP, the, the username and the password, which we pass in as environment variables through the, um, through the uh, console. Then we've had a look at the get request function, which uh, takes as a parameter only the mount point, and then the post request, which takes two parameters from us, the mount point, and the payload that we're gonna send through the post call. So thank you so much for watching this. Next, we're gonna have a look at other functions that we wrote in the script and that we developed so that we accomplish the actual five things that we set up at the beginning. So thank you so much for watching. Hope it was useful for you and see you on the next, uh, on the next class. Thanks.